The final mouse, Starlight 12, has divided the community, with some people saying it's the greatest mouse of all time, and others on the other extreme saying that it's not worth the magnesium it was forged from. I'd like to give my experience of using the mouse for around a month and invite you all to join the discussion around the costs of innovation and the evolving relationship between weight and aiming. More importantly, what I'd like from you all is to leave a comment and give me your opinions about the product. Did you buy it? Did you not buy it? If not, why not? Ultimately, I'd want us all to come together to answer the question, is the Final Mouse Starlight 12 good enough? So to talk about the Final Mouse Starlight 12, I think you have to talk about the drop uh, and how difficult it was to actually acquire one of these mice. I think 10,000 were released, most of them being purchased almost immediately by resellers. I was fortunate enough to get one Achilles Small, which wasn't my first choice, but I'm pretty happy I actually secured a, a mouse at retail uh, so that I could use it and obviously review. The second drop has been confirmed as the Phantom colorway in November. So if you're watching at the time of recording, you will have another opportunity to buy one of these mice if it sounds like it is for you. The price is 190 US dollars, which is quite reasonable considering what's being delivered. That being said, 190 dollars is a lot for a mouse. Uh, can't forget that at all. The unboxing experience was very lean, there were no spare skates, the charging cable that was provided was pretty abysmal and not something that you'd ever want to use with the mouse. Limited extras, I think there was a couple of cue cards that told you how to use the mouse. Uh, that was quite disappointing actually for a product that was almost $200. No software either, uh, you've got DPI steps on the, the mouse on a button there, I think there's four. DPI stages could be incorrect there, the right information will be on the screen. But ultimately I would have expected a little bit more personally from Final Mouse here. I appreciate that they're looking for product performance and not necessarily bloatware, which I think you're, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't with respect to providing software with your mouse. In terms of the sensor, it's a final sensor, which to my understanding is a modified 3370. No issues whatsoever on any surface, including the Artisan Raiden, which I know has spin-out issues on 3389s and some of the older sensors. In terms of battery life, absolutely no concerns whatsoever. This battery lasts between one and two weeks in my experience, dependent upon how heavily you're using the mouse and if you're turning the mouse off when you put it down at the end of the day. I've used this mouse on a variety of different mouse pads and I've personally found it to perform best and more, most consistently for me on the Artisan Hayate Otsu or the Artisan Shidenkai, which is the pad that you see in the review at the moment. It's worth noting that I have swapped the stock skates for hyperglides due to personal preference and haven't experienced any of the lift-off distance issues that other people have reported. Just because I haven't had them doesn't mean that they aren't persistent. So if you are replacing your skates for aftermarket options, please do so with care. The weight in itself is a significant selling point for this mouse, uh, being under 45 grams for a fully featured wireless mouse. That being said, for me personally, that wasn't the biggest wow factor from the mouse, the biggest selling point, because I'm quite used to using wireless mice around that range and certainly wired mice lighter uh, than that particular mouse. Additionally, my very average skill bracket, I don't think notices, maybe if you're a top esports pro, it might give a competitive advantage. Uh, I didn't feel that it noticeably improved or indeed worsened my game moving to the Starlight 12. I felt uh, almost no difference whatsoever in, in how I played or how I performed. So I guess both a positive or negative. Uh, depending on how you want to look at that. Using the small Achilles and the Ultralight 2 as a previous main mouse, I don't know if I could necessarily immediately say that I do prefer the Starlight 12. It is an exceptional product and something that I'm very happy exists, but I don't necessarily think that the shift to magnesium has been a universally positive move for this product or indeed for the industry.
And what Final Mouse excel at is presenting a convincing idea for what would make a better product. They're incredibly effective at convincing the market to agree with them. Initially with the Ultralight Pro and Honeycomb Mice, uh, more recently with the Starlight and Magnesium Mice, which as I mentioned, Magnesium itself brings a series of challenges. I'd like to run through these quality issues and build challenges in order of severity and share why actually they don't really bother me all that much. Starting with the comments around the misaligned scroll wheel. So the image on the screen shows how my mouse shipped and how I was able to correct the position of my scroll wheel with a simple piece of heat shrink placed upon the plunger to even it out. This was a cosmetic issue, but something that a lot of people immediately noticed, partly because of the price of the mouse and secondly, because they expected perfection from the marketing messages that Final Mouse had put out around this being a mouse of the gods and a game changing mouse. Secondly, is around the bases being crooked in a lot of the mice. The mice weren't standing flush on a flat surface. There was a little bit of movement. The mouse was only ever able to sit on three of the skates. Now, after investigation, I discovered that this came as a result of tolerance on the top shell clips and securing them to the base. So the base of the mouse is made of an Ultum plastic and the top of the mouse being the magnesium that's described in all of the marketing material. This can be easily corrected by adding packing to the clips, which you can see in the images that I'm provided. Uh, but it's a fault that wouldn't be on this mouse if they'd opted for a plastic variant. This came as a direct result of attaching Ultum to magnesium and there being literally no tolerance on the cast. The third issue is around the mylar pads slipping. So metal hitting metal sounds and feels pretty obnoxious. And to limit this reverberation heard, Final Mouse used mylar pads to deaden the click reset that are secured in place with a little bit of adhesive. And mine, alongside many others, had come dislodged, leading to very, very noisy and clunky feeling click rebounds. Now, this can be resolved by gluing these mylar pads back in place on the clicks, which I did with mine. Uh, but if you've lost it, then you can use an alternative material, something like an aluminium foil uh, or even a piece of uh, electrical tape would probably do the job. Uh, but again, this is something that was put in place and an issue that's arisen from the usage of magnesium as opposed to plastic. So thirdly, and this is partly subjective, is the click weight. The stock Omron 20Ms that this mouse shipped with were some of the stiffest and least comfortable buttons that I have ever clicked personally. The magnesium was rigid and the click operating force or actuation force didn't help at all. I'd heard reports that these buttons needed to be broken in, so I did leave it a couple of weeks, but the issue persisted. In fact, if anything, it just got worse. The clicks felt stiff and unusable when spamming. I opened up my mouse and swapped the switches for TTC Gold V2 30 million, which I binned to ensure that I had a pair with very, very light operating force that retained their tactility. You can see from the images there, the particular switches that I used. Now, this has massively improved my enjoyment and usability of the product. And I wanted to include a quick click test so that you can hear how they sound in the Starlight product. Now a caveat to this section is that Final Mouse have confirmed that the November drop of the Starlight 12, the Phantom drop, will be using Kale 8.0s. I can't comment on how these will perform as there's a large operating force delta on the switches, the, the Kale 8.0s themselves, but I do hope that they will be better implementation than the stock Omron 20Ms were on the legendary Mouse of the Gods drop.
So how much weight was actually saved moving to magnesium construction? Now, the magnesium has been the real selling point of this mouse. That's what's promoted, that's what's advertised. But I found that a significant amount of the weight reduction in this product came from the Ultim plastic used in the base, which typically would be constructed from ABS plastic. Now, Ultim itself is a very, very lightweight, very flexible product, but also has very little rigidity uh, and, and is easy to flex and easy to mold. So the magnesium top shell allowed Final Mouse to use the Ultim without compromising structural integrity on this particular mouse. The magnesium from my weight, which you'll see on the screen, saved somewhere between four to six grams versus the Ultralight uh, 2's plastic construction on the top. The Ultim base, however, saved around 10 grams on uh, its ABS counterpart. So for me, that's where the real innovation lies, is in the, the Ultim base, not necessarily the magnesium top. I think that if the top of the mouse was also made out of the same ABS plastic used in the Ultralight 2, we would probably see a mouse that's maybe five, six grams heavier than it presently is, but it also wouldn't be plagued by the issues that I've just described, that being the Mylar pads, the click weight, misaligned scroll wheel, I mean, question mark, maybe that would still be there, uh, but certainly all the other problems that come with magnesium would not be there, um, and we'd only really see a five or six gram delta as a consequence. Now, I mentioned at the top of this section that these issues don't actually bother me, uh, and they don't because none of them are deal breakers. They're things that I was easily able to rectify in my mouse with a little bit of ingenuity and uh, creative use of, of aluminium tape. But this is a generation one product doing something relatively untested and challenging the established industry names to look at their production methods and ask the question, could we do it differently? I don't think that magnesium is the end game, but Final Mouse have shown that at least we could explore some other methods and other materials rather than conforming to tried and tested ABS plastic. And for that, I think I'm willing to both accept the aforementioned issues in this section and actually commend them for bringing the Starlight 12 to market. It didn't need to be the end game mouse. It just needed to exist and succeed, which I think it absolutely has. The evolving relationship between weight and aim has been a interesting one. Previously, I guess if you go back seven, eight years, the prevailing wisdom was actually to add weights in, into your mouse for more stability. Recently, I guess in the past five, six years, we've seen weight reduction at all costs. There has been some theory around that, certainly Newton's first law uh, and the idea of inertia and stopping heavier objects. But I guess, has Final Mouse's innovation been stifled in this pursuit of weight at all costs. We've seen three size variants since the Ultralight Pro released in 2018, but no new shapes. We've probably had four, maybe five years coming up to now with no new shapes from Final Mouse. Now, assuming the Final Mouse shape works for you, the, uh, the Ultralight shape, then they'll continue to offer you increasingly lighter variants of that shape. If it doesn't, unfortunately, Final Mouse have done nothing in the past four and a half years that would change that. Other companies have tested the waters with more risky or unique shapes. And if shape really is king, the question I have to keep asking myself is, what value does weight have beyond a certain point? I think that as a community, we should challenge the idea that lower weight equals better aim. It's, it's kind of being thrown around as fact at the moment, and I certainly don't pertain to, to have the answer or the definitive opinion on this. Ultimately, mouse companies will produce increasingly lighter mice because they realize that it's a way to continue to sell their products. That isn't necessarily validation, nor does it give evidence that necessarily the company believes it themselves. If the community and the market asks for a lightweight mouse, that's what's going to be on the box. I think that I land on weight might impact aim uh, and I certainly wouldn't quote it as a fact. In my personal experience, moving to a lighter mouse has had, 
I'd say diminishing returns on my ability to aim. I think going anything below 60 grams, right the way down to 35 grams, I have not seen marked increases in my ability to aim. In fact, between the Ultralight 2 and the Starlight 12, as I mentioned right at the top, there has been no tangible difference in my ability to use or aim with the mouse. This might be different in your example, but I can only speak from my own personal case. Uh, I actually play best with the G-Wolves HSK, as you see on the screen there, because I am a fingertip player and the shape is most comfortable to me. But I could also totally understand the perspective of a player who plays their best with a 70 to 80 gram Vaxi or Zowie product. I think what I'd like to see from Final Mouse is exploring more than just weight. I think if Final Mouse truly want to continue being innovators and market leaders, what I'd like to see from them are some ergonomic mice designs, some larger mice designs, some, some different shapes, something like the MM720, something like the Orochi, the MZ1, trying some different shapes to see if Final Mouse can really design the perfect mouse for all scenarios. I think Final Mouse have delivered an, an exceptional product. It's, it really is a great wireless mouse, and that's probably the first pro here. This is a 45 to 50 gram, depending on size, wireless mouse with a high performing sensor and a strong battery life. Shape itself, whilst, as I've said, doesn't break any boundaries, is a known quantity. So going in blind as a consumer, you should have a good idea if the Final Mouse shape will work for you before you buy it because it's effectively been the same mouse for the past four years. Thirdly, the resale price on these remains strong, so if you don't get on with the product, you shouldn't lose money when you resell it. You should in fact gain, but ultimately the main thing here is this is a risk-free purchase. Finally, it's a unique product. It's a halo product, if you'd say, designed for enthusiasts. There is a real sense of prestige at least I have it, having this mouse out on my desktop. And I think it's nice to own something if you're a fan of the industry. You know, people spend a lot of money to have luxury cars or you know, very nice designer trainers or sneakers. I think that the final mouse really is, it falls in that category. It's not going to do much better than you could probably get a mouse for half of that price. But if you value it and you have the disposable income to go ahead with, then by all means do so. In terms of cons, I think the generation one issues that I described and the teething troubles of the product are obviously something that might put people off. There's nothing uh, irreparable, uh, but you've got to be prepared to get your hands dirty and make some minor QC changes yourself if you want to get the most out of this mouse, because to my understanding, very few of them are delivered in absolute perfect condition. There's always something that could be tweaked or improved to make them slightly better. Secondly, availability. Limited drop products are always a pain, whether it's GPUs, whether it's the Steam Deck recently, or the Switch OLED that people have desperately tried to get into their baskets. The final mouse is no different. I think anything that you limit the stock quantity of and have limited availability for will be difficult to buy. And I think that in an ideal world, this is a mouse that would be on general availability and people could join an order queue for. Thirdly, shape only two sizes are available now i mentioned this as a pro because the shape is a known quantity it's kind of a con too the shape is a known quantity there's nothing new about this mouse if you've used the ultralight 2. the medium is i guess a caveat to that it is a slightly new shape if you wanted a scaled up ultralight or a scaled down air 58 if that appeals to you then disregard this con this would probably be a pro finally the price I think the first thing I said in this review was that the price was reasonable value. I think it is reasonable value. Uh, the price is $190. It is a first generation magnesium mouse, but it's still almost $200. For most people, you will not see a tangible improvement in your game between this and a decent $40 to $60 wired or $80 to $100 wireless mouse. If you have the means and want the product, you don't need my permission or recommendation to do so, but I wouldn't expect to pay $200, grab this mouse and be professional.
So those were my thoughts on the Final Mouse Starlight 12. More importantly, what are yours? Did you get a Starlight 12? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you hoping to get one in November? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you all about your perspectives and opinions so we can broaden the discussion. Lastly, if you thought the content was worthwhile, please consider leaving a subscription. It's critical to getting this channel off the ground and getting more eyes on the content that we put out there.